Welcome to this tutorial today where we are going to be talking about the mitochondria. And before I say anything more at all, I will just say that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. If I don't say that, I know almost every biology teacher on earth will hunt me down. So your mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But what does it look like and what exactly does it do? So we've got this eukaryotic cell here. So a eukaryotic cell meaning it has a nucleus and we can see these strange shaped or bean shaped organelles within our cytoplasm called the mitochondria. So they're bean shaped cytoplasmic organelles. But we can't really see too much from this uh, zoomed out view of the cell so let's zoom in to a individual mitochondria and see exactly what it's going to look like. So we're just zooming in here and we have a mitochondria. And I should actually point out that the correct term for an individual or singular mitochondria is a mitochondrion. So mitochondrion. And the first thing we need to know is that our mitochondrion are going to be producing most of our ATP. So that's why we call it the powerhouse of the cell. It's producing most of your ATP, which is your energy. The energy that we have within our body to perform almost any action is ATP. So it's involved in cellular respiration. And this organelle that's going to be involved in your cellular respiration is going to be enclosed within two membranes. So two membranes. We have this outer membrane here and we have an inner membrane as well. And their basic structure is not dissimilar from the plasma membrane you have around your entire cell. And although the outer membrane is relatively smooth and doesn't have really any distinguishing features, the inner membrane has these infolds called cristae. And we can see all of these infolds here within this inner membrane that are going to form cristae. And that's just referring to all of the folding within that membrane. And that's to increase the surface area. If we have a lot of cellular respiration and ATP generation, we need as much surface for that to take place as possible. So when you hear the term criste, remember folding and surface area. And within that inner membrane, within the actual membrane itself, we have the matrix. And the matrix of the mitochondria is basically a giant soup of hundreds of different enzymes that are going to be participating in this respiration. And there's going to be a, a lot more than enzymes in there. There'll be uh, DNA as well as RNA and uh, ribosomes. So we'll write all this down. So first things first, respiration happens within the matrix of the mitochondria. And as I just stated, the mitochondria contain their own DNA with their own set of genes. And if they have their own DNA, they'll also have their own RNA and their own ribosomes for translating that genetic code into their own functional proteins. But our mitochondria can even do something else. They can self-replicate. So these intracellular organelles produce energy. They have their own DNA, RNA, and ribosomes, and they can self-replicate. They basically sound like cells within our cells, right? And that's something pretty amazing that you'll learn about in another tutorial called endosymbiosis. It's thought that mitochondria arose or evolved from bacteria that took up residency within other cells and were like, yep, I like this place, I'm staying here. But it benefits our cells hugely, so we let them stay. And within our body, this self-replication of the mitochondria is going to be based on demand. So if you're in a time of heightened ATP demand, they're going to replicate, they're going to uh, split in half and then use their own DNA to 
uh, form new cristae and enlarge back to the size of a regular mitochondrion. And with that, the last uh, feature, I guess you could say, of the mitochondria that you're going to need to remember is the intermembrane space. So if we have these two membranes, we're going to have a space in between them. And this intermembrane space of the mitochondria is also going to be playing a role in the intracellular respiration. So you have to know about that. Remember the intermembrane space. So important in many uh, respiration processes. And that's going to cover all the basic features and functions of your mitochondria. So remember all those different uh, parts, the matrix, the cristae, the inner and outer membranes, and you'll do fine. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.